Okay, Emmanuel, the floor is yours. Thank you. So, uh, I come from the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecast, and uh, we have a pretty large uh, archive of uh, our forecast, uh, in fact, the, the largest in the world. And so, uh, extracting data from there is uh, quite tricky. Uh, what do we do? Uh, we are a, a, an international organization uh, financed by 34 uh, member states uh, and we perform uh, operational services, namely uh, weather forecast and we support the national weather services in uh, uh, the exploitation of our data. Uh, we do research in this field and we also provide uh, some uh, Copernicus services, so uh, free access to some of our data and some data that we compute especially for that. Uh, obviously, this is not just computing, we also have to acquire quite a lot of uh, data. In fact, weather data for us are two main categories. One is uh, made uh, by observation, so we collect data from satellite, from radar, from weather station, and whatever we can fetch. <laughs> and uh, we archive those data in our system, and then we use those uh, observations to create a, 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 an interpolation of the status of the atmosphere. Then, from that interpolation, uh, we start our numerical models that uh, are coupled models. So we have a, an ocean model and a sea ice model, a land model, and an atmosphere one. Uh, obviously, we are more interested in the atmosphere. Uh, this model is producing a, a <coughs> simulated uh, set of variables for each cell of the, our grid. Um, Obviously, the, the variables are temperature, pressure, uh, wind spin, uh, and direction, humidity, and so on. Uh, we are interested in both the 2D fields, mainly on the uh, land surface, and three fields, like uh, the wall atmosphere. Uh, the the, the uh, computational cost is uh, uh, linear in the number of cells, so we have to somehow optimize the, the data grid that we use to uh, reduce the, the computational cost. Uh, in fact, uh, okay, now uh, I will forget for uh, a while the observation. I, I will focus on the, the uh, model output. It is uh, the part that we really uh, are required to archive and assess uh, quickly for our uh, users. Again, the grid. Uh, instead of uh, keeping a, a regular uh, lat long grid, we uh, optimize uh, a little bit the computational cost by using a grid that is decreasing the number of points as we approach the, the poles. Uh, we call that grid the, the reduced uh, Gaussian uh, octahedral grid. Why octahedral? Because it's essentially based on uh, an octahedron that is uh, just outside the Earth. And so we can uh, uh, somehow half the number of points uh, that we use for describing the, 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 uh, each layer of the atmosphere. Um, obviously, this is really helpful from the computational point of view, while uh, all the geometric computation are <laughs> somehow affected by the fact that uh, uh, we have to interpolate from this grid to the one that uh, our user wants. Another aspect is the uh, Z-level. We cannot use a, a constant Z-level uh, when we have a mountain, obviously. We are not interested in the atmosphere uh, under the ground. So we have uh, the, the um, <coughs> layers that are uh, following the, the shape of the Earth, so the digital elevation model, up to a certain pressure, and then we go uh, on constant uh, layers. So even on Z, we have to interpolate in a, a somehow a custom way. Uh, having those constraints, uh, we designed a system that is uh, able to scale with the resolution. So the idea is that uh, uh, we want to provide a higher resolution simulation for our user, but obviously uh, increasing the resolution, uh, resolution is uh, quite costly. Doubling the resolution usually um, 
costing us uh, eight times the computational power. Two for the dimension, one because we have to reduce the time, sp uh, time step uh, to get uh, accurate calculation. So uh, the, 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 the impact on the computation and on the output file is pretty heavy. Uh, right now, we are running our system at nine kilometer uh, per cell. So essentially, every cell is uh, 81 square kilometers on the uh, global uh, simulation. This generates uh, layers that are 6.6 uh, uh, million of points, uh, roughly. And so each field is uh, uh, stored in about uh, 50 megabytes. Uh, the bro problem is that uh, we store uh, 137 layer for each uh, variables and uh, we perform uh, 51 different simulation um, every twice a day, to be honest. Uh, and so essentially we generate millions of fields every day. So our archive is increasing uh, nearly 200 terabytes per day. So in five days we had a petabyte. Uh, so um, a little bit more in detail. We perform uh, every day, twice a day, uh, so with two different timing at uh, midnight and mid, uh, at noon, uh, a simulation at nine kilometers. Then we perform 50 simulation with uh, an ensemble of 50 simulation at, at uh, 18 kilometers resolution again twice a day, then we have a lower resolution but extended in time uh, simulation and then we have also quite a lot of research activity that is also generating new data set. This is the amount of data that we distribute and uh, in, the, in the last few years uh, the, the, the uh, amount of data has been increasing uh, almost exponentially and this is our forecast. So, Right now, our simulation that is performed in one hour is generating roughly 70 uh, terabytes of data. So it means that uh, we are writing to disk uh, roughly 19 gigabytes per second. And this is uh, our major constraints. Our model can scale way better. We theoretically could already produce this amount of data, but simply we cannot store it. Uh, the, the, the I.O. Uh, that we are uh, using today, that is a parallel file system with luster and so on, is not able to, to cope with that. Uh, and we are working to, to improve on that size. But in any case, we are committed to increase to 5 kilometer resolution by the uh, 2025. So we are still working on that. Our computing facilities. We have a, a redundant system with two supercomputers. Uh, we already signed for uh, uh, better ones that uh, are going to be deployed uh, this year, but uh, right now we are using those uh, that, are, that are still uh, uh, in position 42 and 43 of the top 500, so not too bad. Um, but again, the, the bottleneck there is the, the Luster uh, parallel file system. Then we have also some uh, resources, some cloud resources for disseminating our data. One is uh, uh, under the umbrella of the Copernicus services and the other one is uh, still experimental, is uh, uh, an European weather cloud that is uh, uh, useful for our member state to exploit those data close to the data source. So instead of uh, fetching the data from us, moving the data in their own facilities and performing the, the simulation there, they can uh, uh, move the computation close to the data and hopefully uh, reduce the, the overall latency. And the most interesting part, uh, our archive. Right now we have uh, 300 petabytes. Obviously we cannot uh, keep everything on disks, so we have a large tape archive, but uh, we have also some nice uh, uh, caching uh, policies. So essentially only 4% of the request uh, are eating the, the, um, the tapes. All the 96, uh, um, all the remaining 96 are either performed from a, an object store that we designed or uh, a hard disk based cache. Uh, again, we are adding nearly 250 terabytes per day, so 
four, five days uh, are an additional petabyte for us. Uh, and also our archive will eat the, the, the capacity of our uh, Oracle uh, tape libraries because the four uh, tape libraries that we have are going to store up to 370 petabytes. So we have to, to extend it uh, somehow. And uh, in any case, we are going to move all the archive in uh, another computing center during this year. So <laughs> we have to manage carefully all those data. Okay, uh, quite a lot of data. How our user uh, request uh, the, the bit they need. They give us a, a user request. We have a, a query language designed for that. Uh, they can specify the number of levels they want, the, the sum of the parameter, temperature, humidity, or whatever they need, a range of dates, because they may be interested in simulating the evolution over time, and also the accuracy. We store uh, a, def a description of the atmosphere each hour. Uh, so uh, they can even decide to uh, subsample. In this case, they are requiring 10 days of simulation uh, with a, a file every three hours. And also, they can specify a, a regional domain. Usually, our services are uh, interested in downscaling on a special area. So we provide the simulation worldwide, and then they focus on uh, uh, their country, their uh, uh, area. Okay, we can easily split those uh, requests in two parts. One is uh, related to the hypercube data assets in the sense that uh, uh, we consider our data as filling an hypercube with the several dimensions that are the data, the level, the variables, and so on. And we have to index those data according to that. And then a geometric query up to now a box, but probably something uh, more interesting will, uh, will be arriving uh, pretty soon. Okay, uh, how can we cope with the hypercube uh, data assets? Uh, we have a, a domain-specific object store that we call the field DB, FDB, so. Uh, each data bit in our FDB is a layer so is a field uh, describing the atmosphere. Uh, the model is writing directly to the FDB, and uh, uh, this is also uh, required to support the throughput that we need from our model, in the sense that the parallel file system cannot guarantee uh, the, the 19 gigabytes per second that we need. So we have this uh, cache that is uh, supporting uh, the, the I.O. Uh, operations. We are also adding several kinds of different uh, backend to our uh, object store. Right now, again, in operation, we have a POSIX uh, file system, and we, have, we are adding something uh, really fancy using uh, NVRAM. And in that case, uh, we can uh, uh, reach uh, hundreds of gigabytes per second. But we are also uh, considering some uh, cloud-friendly um, <clears throat> layer like a Ceph. Ceph is still uh, uh, not performing to the level we have from uh, POSIX, so is ra roughly four times slower, so we are uh, still working on that. In any case, the, the object store is uh, supporting our hypercube queries, so the, 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 uh, all those parameters are selected from an index and then we just uh, it the disk for uh, loading the, the, the field uh, with a, a length and an off offset. Uh, we get nice uh, properties like uh, uh, is fully acid uh, the system. All the data are fully flushed, so we get uh, uh, um, some nice guarantee on the, the, the uh, data. Um, <coughs> that the data are uh, stable even if we have a crash in the, the computing system. Moreover, uh, having a large uh, computing environment 
we may have trouble like a, a node that is uh, dropping or something like that. So we may need to rerun a computation and we still want to uh, guarantee that uh, the, the data are fully accessible and uh, reliable. So uh, we uh, have a write once uh, uh, policy. So in case of a rerun, uh, data are not overwritten, otherwise we can risk to have uh, two instances of the data that are not fully consistent. We write in a newer location, then we purge the, the, the uh, uh, space that is no longer required when the new write has been completed. Uh, okay, the, the idea is that uh, we produce the data, we store on the, the parallel file system, and then we archive on the tapes. Uh, with FDB, all the, the process has been modified, so the, the object store is taking care of all the I.O. and then is forwarding the data to the parallel file system and to the archive, and eventually we will provide also a, a, a cloud consumer that um, is uh, <coughs> really interesting for assessing the data uh, and performing computation close to them. Uh, for the geometrical part, again, we have agreed that that is uh, not user friendly in the sense that uh, is uh, uh, not the regular lat long that uh, our user needs. So we have to interpolate uh, to uh, a, a regular one. Up to now, we are interpolating the wall layer, so the globe, and just then we crop. Uh, the, the, the user selected domain. Uh, we do that because uh, uh, using Luster, we cannot uh, byte address uh, the data. So we have to read the whole field and compute on that. Uh, we are all working on uh, nicer uh, data storage for byte addressability. And so for being able to read just the subset of the data that are required for the interpolation. So it's essentially the, the, the portion of the, the um, Gaussian grid that are required to interpolate just the subdomain. Uh, this is still in work, uh, but um, hopefully uh, it will see the daylight in, uh, in a few months. Uh, again, what can we do for uh, giving all the user access to uh, our archive. Uh, we are developing a, a, a cloud as a service uh, uh, system for uh, um, letting the user to use our query language at real access the data. Uh, the system is uh, under development and is financed by a couple of uh, European projects, namely I'm <laughs> paid by one of those, uh, that is Lexis. Uh, the idea is that uh, the data are accessible even from a, a, a externally by simply uh, hitting a, a REST API, all from the European Weather Cloud that we are hosting. Uh, everything is uh, a nice RESTful API with uh, both a um, command uh, line interface and a Python uh, client that is uh, connecting and uh, supporting all the queries that uh, we offer. Uh, we give uh, through this uh, uh, polytop either access to the archive and to the uh, real time data. There is a license issue up to now, so essentially the data are not uh, freely available. We are <laughs> um, selling the data for a living, uh, but uh, we are committed, uh, thanks to uh, an effort of our member state, to release our data, but it will take uh, a few years. Uh, more details on the uh, exploitation of those uh, data from the cloud uh, will be in uh, this talk given by my colleague uh, John. I'm um, here, yeah, obviously, for question if we have time. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? In the back. Uh, okay. We have a, a, an open source version of the model that is OpenIFS. We have uh, open access for research to the archive. The only thing that is uh, not accessible for free is the real-time forecast. 
in the sense that uh, for a research, usually having the data with uh, a few days of delays is not an issue. But uh, you can easily ask for uh, research access and play with uh, the high resolution and whatever uh, you want. Um, as, and uh, the project uh, I'm working with, uh, we will have uh, an open call for uh, uh, exploiting those data and so you can apply for uh, the Lexis open call and ask for access even of the uh, real-time data. It will be time constrained for the lifetime of the project but still uh, uh, something relevant uh, and useful for playing with the, the largest archive that uh, up to now is available in the world. Okay, another one? Yes, there. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, How is the interface? Sure, sure. Um, the, the possibility to uh, get the data on a regular lat long grid is, uh, um, is already there, in the sense that uh, the interpolation uh, in the, is uh, a parameter of the query language. So you can select uh, uh, the, the desired resolution one grade, uh, one uh, degree, 0 0.23, whatever you want, up to 0 0.1 degrees, up to now. And uh, essentially the, uh, the interpolation is performed on the fly for you. So you already can get the data on the grid that you uh, like, without the, the need to implement it. cut off here. Oh, sorry. So you can start afterwards if you want. Sure. Uh, thank you very much, once again. Thanks.